everybody, Max Scoville here filling in for NARS, and on today's Daily Fix of Gaming News, we get a little bit of insight into how much it costs Sony to put a game on PlayStation Plus, but clearly they can afford it because PS5 shipments are up 400% from last year, and finally, Battlefield 2042's recent limited time event was a lot more limited time than anticipated due to some bugs. Oof. Let's get into it. <laughs> If you've ever wondered how much money it costs Sony and Microsoft to put a third-party game on PlayStation Plus or Xbox Game Pass respectively, a recent filing by the company that makes ARK Survival Evolved might give you some idea. Spotted by Kotaku, Snail Games USA, who owns ARK's developer studio Wildcard, recently made a routine filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission that listed how much money Sony and Microsoft each paid to include the multiplayer survival game on their respective subscription services. The inclusion of ARK in the March 2022 PlayStation Plus game lineup cost Sony a whopping $3.5 million. Or maybe that's not whopping, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have $3.5 million, so I'm assuming that's a large number. The game was available for subscribers to add to their library for a five-week period between March 1st and April 4th, and available to download and play as long as they remain subscribers after that. That's how PlayStation Plus works, you're probably familiar. Microsoft, meanwhile, negotiated a deal to keep Ark Survival Evolved on Xbox Game Pass for three whole years and paid significantly less at only $2.5 million. What a deal! On top of that, Microsoft made a deal for $2.3 million to put Ark's upcoming sequel on Game Pass when Ark 2 releases sometime next year. PS Plus and Game Pass aren't identical services, and I'm guessing that multi-million dollar business deals are slightly more complicated than can be loosely summarized in two paragraphs by a pointy-haired man, but it sure seems like Microsoft got a better deal than Sony did. Anyway, they're both chumps because you can get Ark Survival Evolved for $19.99 on Steam, and even less if you wait for a sale. Moving on, Sony clearly has a little bit of cash to throw around because the PlayStation 5 is the company's fastest selling console to date. In spite of supply shortages, you probably knew about that. However, those shortages are gonna be less of an issue this holiday season because the amount of PS5 shipped to the US has increased 400% since this time last year. MST Financial Senior Analyst David Gibson shared this data on Twitter and the massive spike in the graph certainly speaks for itself. While Sony is likely preparing for the holiday shopping rush in general, there's also the highly anticipated God of War Ragnarok launching next month. You probably want to make sure people can get their hands on a PS5 to play it. So if you're still having trouble finding a PS5, that might change soon. So keep looking, and it probably wouldn't hurt to go follow IGN Deals on Twitter. Tell them I say hi. In recent years, the Battlefield series has garnered a reputation for shaky launches, and Battlefield 2042 is keeping that tradition going strong almost a whole year since its release. Earlier today, the limited time mid-season event called the Liquidators kicked off, but its time was a bit more limited than originally planned because developer DICE had to pull the plug 30 minutes in. The official Battlefield Twitter posted about the outage explaining, quote, We're seeing that the unlock rewards and progress for the event are not tracking correctly and cannot be equipped when showing as unlocked. Thankfully, this has since been resolved, but the amount of trouble this game has had getting off the ground borders on slapstick. The developers had their hands full fixing so many issues at launch that Season 1 didn't release until seven months after the main game did. Since then, a petition has circulated online from players demanding refunds, which has amassed 230,000 signatures and counting. In early March, 2042 had less concurrent players on Steam than any of the three previous games, and even Battlefield 4, which was released in 2013, had more people playing it than the latest entry in the series. Yikes! What do you think? Is 2042 salvageable, or should DICE just cut its losses and move on to the next game? Or better yet, continue to support the earlier games. I still want bicycles in Battlefield 1, damn it. It's not, not a stupid idea. They had them in World War 1. Show the picture. See? Bicycles. Put them in the game. Anyway, there's your fix for October 11th, 2022. If you want more gaming stuff, check out our IGN first for High on Life, where we learn all about those talking guns. Hey, if you interview a talking gun, who is interrogating whom? Weird question. As always, go follow IGN on all of the things, and I will see you next time, unless NARS is back, and then I will sit quietly in the corner. And remember, stay fabulous. And if you're not fabulous, come on, get your life together. Be fabulous already.